the legendary Bell 47 and the world's greatest model of that helicopter. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today, we're going to talk about the iconic G Mark 120th scale Bell 47G helicopter model. This kit was introduced from Japan in the mid 1970s. It sold new back then for $50, which was a princely sum. Uh, if you can find one today on eBay, uh, an original kit unbuilt is selling for literally thousands of dollars. They're very, very rare. But before we talk about the model, let's uh, discuss the actual helicopter. It's a very historic machine. The Bell 47 was an evolution of the Bell Model 30 seen here in a, uh, on a brochure cover. Uh, the Model 30 was a pioneering machine. It had the uh, patented Bell rotor system. And if you've ever stood underneath the rotors of a flying helicopter, uh, I, it, it, you tend to think that this photo, well, they didn't have Photoshop in those days, but take a look at this. The helicopter's airborne. There's no snow blowing anywhere. The woman's hair is perfect. I'm thinking, well, what can I say? The Bell 47 made its first flight in December 1945. In 1946, it became the first helicopter ever certified for civilian use. It was produced from 1955 to 1974, and a total of 5,600 Bell 47s were built in the United States and under license in Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom. The 47G model first flew in 1953. It had a 200 horsepower Franklin engine and uh, larger saddlebag fuel tanks, as you see here. Uh, the helicopter had an 85 mile an hour cruise speed and a 200 mile range. It became the quintessential utility helicopter uh, for training, uh, agricultural use, any number of uses. It was just uh, the backbone of the light helicopter fleet in the United States in the 1950s. The model G2 went into production in 1955. It had a derated 260 horsepower Lycoming engine. And in 1958, TV station KTLA in Los Angeles equipped a, a G2 model with a TV camera system. And it created the world's first TV news copter using the Bell 47 G2. Later models like the G3 seen here uh, used by the LA County Sheriff were used by NASA to train Apollo astronauts to fly the lunar lander in the 1960s. And of course, no mention of the Bell 47 would be complete without talking about the TV show Whirly Birds, which uh, first uh, appeared in 1957 and ran through 1960. This was a great adventure series uh, with uh, Chuck and PT flying the Bell 47G. Uh, it inspired a generation of helicopter pilots who made their careers uh, in the latter part of the 20th century. That TV show leads us to the Columbus Day Air Show and Open House at MacArthur Airport in Islip, Long Island. They had the military airplanes like you see here, uh, all sorts of different airplanes giving rides during the day. And lo and behold, in the corner on the grass was a Bell 47 named the Whirly Bird. It was from Island Helicopters at Zons Airport. And I chose this to be my very first aircraft that I ever flew in. So there's the intrepid future aviation artist at age 10 sitting in the Bell 47. And what I remember, I still to this day remember how loud that thing was. And the fact that it vibrated, it felt like it was shaking itself to pieces. And I loved every second of it. And ever since that time, I always dreamed of having a really large, detailed, uh, accurate scale model of the uh, Bell 47 that I flew in. And it took a while, but I finally acquired a buildup of the GMARC kit uh, recently, and it, it became a restoration project. It was in need of uh, some tender, loving care. And so I actually stripped the decals and stripped everything off and uh, repainted it uh, in the uh, color scheme of the Bell 47 that I first flew in. So let's take a look at the model. As I said, the uh, kit came out in the mid-70s. 
Uh, I actually purchased a kit back then and it was, it was just way too complicated to build. Um, it came in a large, uh, about a 24 inch long uh, box. And uh, uh, it was just, uh, you know, they talk about skill level two and three. This, was, this went to 11. Uh, the skids and the entire tail boom were brass and were pre-assembled and pre-painted. And then you see the rotor head there on the left. And it came inside the box. It was uh, encased in this styrofoam uh, structure so that it wouldn't be damaged in shipping. And uh, it, it was a, the box itself was a work of art. Here's a close-up of the uh, casting. You can see the detail. And as I said, you, you look at this and, and it just it defies the imagination how complicated this kit was. Uh, and then below the brass uh, parts was another cardboard box uh, of uh, the plastic parts, which was the bubble, the cabin, um, the engine, and all the details. It's quite a complicated kit. The direction, I'm sorry, the decal sheet uh, had markings for uh, the Japanese versions and several uh, other countries uh, for registration. So here's the finished model. Let's take uh, let's take a walk around. Look at the detail in this thing. You can see the uh, uh, the cyclic and collective uh, controls in the cockpit. That's a rubber tire on the uh, ground handling wheel. Uh, fully detailed Lycoming VO 435 engine, and the rotor head, as I said. Take a look in the cockpit. You can actually read the instruments on the instrument panel, and you can see the uh, carb heat and uh, mixture controls there at the top, uh, plus the radio stack in front and uh, uh, the rudder pedals. It was just an exquisite, just an exquisite model. You, I, I, to this day, I feel like I could just walk over and climb right into it and start it up and fly off. Close up of the tail rotor assembly, uh, the uh, rotor guard and the uh, horizontal stabilizer. And then a nice view of the uh, detailed engine uh, and uh, fuel tanks, battery there at the left, uh, just uh, fabulous. Here's a close up of the rotor head. It's painted silver. And of course the rotor blades. I might mention the earlier uh, model 47s had wood, wooden rotor blades. Uh, the 47 G2 had metal blades and those are faithfully reproduced in the kit. I like to collect uh, helicopter models. I've always had a warm spot in my heart for copters after flying in the 47, and I've flown in many more since then. Um, so this is a close-up of uh, what I call my Bell 47 farm. I grow them, <laughs> but uh, uh, seriously, I have uh, a number of 47 models in different scales, as you see here. And this gives you an idea of the size of the GMARC kit seen in the foreground. Um, here are the different scales. Uh, starting from the top, we have a 132nd scale uh, Bell factory buildup, actually. And then the smaller one in the center there is the 172nd scale. Uh, the one on the right is 148th, and the G Mark 120th in uh, the foreground. So there's the model. I had to wait about 60 years uh, to make that dream come true. But uh, lo and behold, I did get my large, fully detailed model of the very first aircraft I ever flew in, seen here, the Bell 47 G2. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this program. And thank you very much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. As always, special thanks to some very special people who uh, helped make this uh, model possible. Uh, my dear friends and model mavens, Jim Keeshan and Chad Slattery and to the late Bob Keller and John Aldez, who were pivotal in uh, creating the, the first kit and realizing the dream of uh, finding a buildup as well. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, take care.